Hello Internet! So, this video is being filmed at like quarter past three in the morning because my brain will not let me sleep. I don't know if it's because it's warm or I don't even know. I, I give up. I'm just not sleeping tonight. So today, or tonight, I'm going to rant about Doctor Who. Now, before anyone goes off at me, I like Doctor Who. I am watching the new season religiously. I have watched all of the new Who and much of the old Who. I like Doctor Who. But I also like science fiction to sort of have some science in it. Spoilers for the most recent episode. Warning. I mean, it would be nice if you have a science fiction mechanism that produces something, which is actually a real thing, but then that real thing behaves like a real thing should. I mean, is that too much to ask? The most recent episode is the one that's really got me, you know, they have all these trees that just appear, and it's like, okay, so you've got some mumbo-jumbo science fiction mechanism for the trees appearing. Whoop-de-doo. But then, the trees create all this blanket of oxygen, so the solar flare can come and burn off the excess oxygen, but they all live as a result. That's not how oxygen in the atmosphere works. If you've got a bigger solar flare that's powerful enough to spontaneously ignite part of the atmosphere, having more oxygen just means it's going to burn away everything on the surface of the planet so much faster. This isn't how that works. <sighs> There's lots of other things in Doctor Who, which are other good examples of that. But yeah, I mean, like, it's just not good science fiction. This is why I just have to settle for option B. Doctor Who can no longer be called a science fiction story. It is now a science fiction fiction fairy tale. Because really, I mean, think about it. You've got a random hero who can travel through time and space and fixes things with cleverness. I mean, how is that not like a fairy tale? There's certainly not a lot of other logic associated with it. It's, it's, it's child's logic. It's child's logic with adult characters. It's basically a fairy tale with science fiction setting because science fiction is the cool thing. I mean, it was like that before, but now it's cool because science fiction is the cool thing. And that's it. It's just not a science fiction show, really. Even Star Trek has more logical science fiction, and half of that is reverse the polarity. Hell, they even reversed the polarity in the Doctor Who anniversary episode, so, yeah. The other thing that bugs me about Doctor Who is the villains. I mean, right, you've got all these great villains, but, like, then it breaks them. Take the Weeping Angels. The Weeping Angels were a fantastic bad guy, basically, for Blink, if you don't know. And then... They, they kind of got through the crash of Byzantium, but, yeah, could have done with some work. And then don't even get me started on the Angels Take Manhattan. Let's just break the rules of a creature that already exists just so we can use it as a traumatic way of getting rid of the Doctor's companions. It's like, no. And, like, the Daleks, don't even get me started on the Daleks. They actually started with something resembling a consistent timeline, even considering the fact that the Doctor goes back and forth in time, they actually started with something that resembled a logical sequence of events for them, even if you did have to string it together over multiple back and forths. And now, now they're just like, ah, oh, well, let's stick the Daleks in here, because why not? And let's stick them in here, because why not? And we've erased them from all of time on six occasions now. But, oh, look, there's a whole armada of them here still. 
<sighs> the Cybermen are slightly better. They had a fairly consistent timeline up until, like, the last season, but I'm pretty sure they're broken now as well. I've lost track of trying to keep up what's going on with them, so I th hope that with this next one coming out, the start of the finale, that they're actually going to do something, because it looks like they're going to tie in some things as to how the Cybermen work, so that should be good. I hope. And the silence. The silence. This huge build-up, and then they were done so well the first time around. And then they're just on the ship for Matt Smith's finale episode. It's like, hello? Where did this happen? Have people stopped forgetting them now? And like, they create all these other great enemies of the Doctor at random times, and then they only use them like, once, or twice. I mean, those aliens from Raxacorica Phalopatorus, they were brilliant. And they clearly have the power to be getting in the way of things, but do they? No. They gave up on them because the storyline was too hard to write, or it wasn't one of the main enemies that they thought they could sell really well. It's just, it's just sad. Anyway, at the end of the day, I still love it, and Peter Capaldi is doing a great job, especially at keeping Moffat into some semblance of behaving like a normal writer who doesn't screw everything over at the earliest opportunity, and it's still fun. You just have to stop trying to pretend that it's anything other than what it is. Anyway, so if you agree with me or disagree with me, just want to hear me keep talking at you about whatever happens, which again will probably be more sci-fi at some point, sorry, will definitely be more sci-fi at some point, and will probably be other things as well, please press the subscribe button, subscribe button, and yeah, I hope to see you next time. I am very bad at speaking at this time of the morning.